What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, the man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We're going to be talking through today's Tuesday NBA slate. Yesterday was not my NBA day. Uh, of course, I've been the, the the one screaming down the the Joe Val. We still got to take chances because of the ceiling and all that You're stuff. You're ridiculous. Course, you know what? The NBA is an amazing. Makes every, day, you know? What did he make? The he made like five his first five threes in the first quarter or something. Like it was just a nuts performance. I just know, but we knew it. I mean, you know what I mean? I, yeah. We just knew it. We just knew it. And the thing is, it's it's weird because you didn't need him to win. You could have gone the other route by playing – well, Nas Reed, you, you kind of wanted to play anyway because he put up 50-something. But you could play Nas Reed and, uh, and Sabonis, and that would have done done just fine as well if you got the other right. parts of it right. So it was just one of those – and it was interesting how, how high owned Sabonis was on a slate with that much center value. And everybody was good. Like, all the centers got there for value. It's just – Everybody got there. Crazy. Like the, everybody and every every team got there, I think. Yeah. And then, of course, I had I played 40% Luca by the end of the day. I played Edwards on the other side. So, I, Edwards was awesome. And then Luca gets ejected early in the third when he's probably got 30 left in him. So, I bubbled, like, the big buy-ins with Luca on my team after the ejection. That was brutal. I can't do anything about that. I won every lineup I played in the – I played 15 lineups in the NFL, and every one of them, I think, except for one cashed. Oh, my um, God. I, I, I we really had the right mix just could have found a couple of things I had like the Dobbs Jones and Dylan like together a lot so that that was looking pretty good but it was a, it was a, a good a good football night a, a little three and a half extra for football and I think uh of uh, pretty much lose 80 percent in basketball <laughs> well let's get let's get into the NBA tonight yep let's jump into it um anything for you last night any 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 sweats anything happen no, nah, I mean I cashed in like the box out or something like that. There was I mean, really just nothing to speak of. Yeah. Well, we got another interesting one tonight. We're probably going to have some more news later on today, as we always seem to. And yeah. Yesterday, yesterday, as as predicted, was the most crazy slate, and then the Russell Westbrook being announced. Just the whole thing was just like, just made you made my head spin. The Russell Westbrook thing I thought was going to leave me in bad shape, but then Kelly Oubre had a good game, who I basically just used to plug him in instead of Westbrook. But uh, weird slate. Anyway. Well, shout out to I think Wolf Wolf Dance. He won the first the first ever true DFS private contest. Yeah. And he slaughtered everybody. He like beat he won by like 20 points. Yeah. Um and uh and yeah, so we're gonna add thirty sixty five dollars to the to the free roll pool for the for the Christmas slate. Um and that's what I'm I'm prob- I'm gonna post one every night, I think, uh, a, a slate. And if it's like a two game NBA slate, maybe I'll post it for a different sport that day or something like that. Want to build that up, and then on Christmas we'll we'll give we'll give some money away. But that's going to be only to 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 premium to some kind of paid premium subscriber. So make sure that you're if you haven't already. Make sure that you get in there. Um, and uh, we're going to keep running these 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 contests for the Discord channel. It's we've been a small buy, and it's one for bragging rights, you know, whatever it is. And as long as you beat Bobby and me that money gets pushed to the free roll. And right. Bobby, Bobby and I got like fifth and fourth yesterday or something. Rody got second, but, um, but, but we were no match for the wolf, for, for the wolf man. Yeah. Good um, job to wolf man. And, and, and do keep, keep an eye out for this guys. I mean, we're adding value to the, to the things she's going to, you know, for the Christmas slate, but we'll yeah. try to keep this going as like sort of a fun thing for community. Yeah. And, and we like, we like to play against our community and talk about it and everything. And there was certainly some, some chatter about it last night, even though everybody was frustrated with the slate, but, uh, but yeah, I think it's I think it's a great thing. I'm glad we're doing it. Good idea to sheets. Um, sheets, all right. You ready to jump into it? Yeah. There is. This is what's cool about this slate at this moment is there is absolutely no one who looks like you need to play them. There is not even close to a player that I would say, oh, there's no way I, I could play a lineup without this guy. Which is yesterday we ended up with like nine guys like that. You had to play. It seemed like. And right now we have nobody. Knock on wood. I'm sure we will get some news, and I think we will get some in this very first game. Well, I think that there are two overall things about the slate that you have to keep in mind. So it's a small slate, and you have what you have Jokic projecting ten points higher than the next guy, and then you have Job projecting like six or so, six or so points higher than the guy after that. Um, so you're going to have to make a decision of how to approach the slate, whether you try to get up to these guys or not. And there's there's two, in my opinion, two totally distinct ways to build, um, and you know, even though there's no value right now, um, there, there very well could be. And there are some key pieces that we have to determine throughout the course of the day, like like what comes out of Phoenix, like, for example. Um, always what comes out of Miami matters. Uh, you mentioned something about Utah, Detroit. We could talk about that as well. So, but I think that's going to be overarching this decision is, is whether you play something like Jokic or Jokic-Morant together or whatever, or, or just go for a completely balanced build. 
for me, I mean, we, we'll get into what we get there. For me, it's it's not difficult. Um, and we'll get to why a little bit later. Yeah. Um, so, so okay, so Utah, Detroit, you think there's news coming out of here. What do you, what do you got here for me? Utah on a back-to-back. They did get killed last night, so that helps them. But Conley is not the kind of guy who generally plays that back-to-backs um, just with the, you know, being banged up and everything. It's And Utah sort of in that funny spot where do we go for it and keep playing it out? Um, do we Are we going to trade all these guys? Either way, it seems likely after 28 minutes that Conley would sit on a back-to-back considering he coming coming back from the injury. And that would open up, you know, Clarkson, and then you get into the Nikhil Alexander Walker, Malik B. Like, there's going to be a, they have a lot of other guys, but there is some some guys we should consider. Um, also, uh, I don't know what they're going to do with Rudy Gay on a back to back. He did play the last back to back for what it's worth. He doesn't play a ton of minutes, but the reason he's interesting a little bit is because Kelly Olynyk and Walker Kessler would be more interesting plays then. But as of right now, the way and and Markkinen had a good game last night until they got you know blown out at the end. But he did play 31 minutes. He was out for a little bit. Just wondering what they're going to do with this but the good news is that at least we have it early um and then you're going to have a, a slew of other things and by the end of the day a guy like Taylor Horton Tucker who is not even in play may end up looking like a really good play depending on what Utah does in this game against Detroit the main plays I have for right now are pretty straightforward look I, I've been beating down this guy's we got to play Duran thing I don't know why I would stop in a great matchup for him tonight the guy is he's averaging 32 points or 31 points no 32 as a as 32 fantasy points as a starter Yet he still doesn't project like he's going to 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 get the run ever, and I don't understand why his uh his projection at twenty five seems low. I just said he's averaging thirty two. This is a plus matchup. His minutes at twenty nine, um, while that seems like a pretty good guesstimate, I think they're underestimating his point per minute. And I also want to point out that in these games, that Jalen Duran has been play- he played the last game. He played twenty eight, thirty, thirty six. So I think that is the right number around twenty nine. I just think there's better production for him in this matchup. Um, I, I like the idea of playing Olinick, who didn't play last night on the on the front end of the back to back. So I think he comes back tonight against his former team. And I like playing Duran, and that's a really interesting start to a build. You can play Olinick at forward, and uh that's that's what I've got from this game. But I but I I like those plays, and by the end of the day, Duran is gonna look worse and worse. And I just think we gotta, you know, I gotta take stands on the guys who I believe are are just are just being underrepresented here. Um, I think you could make a good case for Isaiah Stewart, who will be more popular than Duran, maybe a little bit higher ceiling. I think Jaden Ivey is in play. I think Alec Burks is in play. Um, there's just a lot of guys who look all right for Detroit, but they have they have they play a lot of guys. Um, so I, right now I have I have uh, oh, and then the one guy who who always seems to just crush his well, at least do better than his projections half the games is Killian Hayes. So I actually have the whole starting lineup as being very much in play Bogdanovich. You also have, it's not really revenge because it's not in Utah, but you have Burks and Bogdanovich against their former team. All these things like playing into it. Everybody on Detroit looks good. It's a good pace game right off the bat. Uh, my favorites being Ivy, Duran, uh, and Stewart. And then on the Utah side at the moment, it's a Linux, but we'll see who plays for them. And I probably going to have more interest there. I do think this is a very stackable game um, if you get the right pieces. And Bogdanovich also, I, sh- I should have mentioned him. Uh, a little bit more he's he, i mean he, he's got a massive ceiling he's pretty consistent you do count on him somewhat being shooting reliant but he's done more things this year than he probably gets credit for um his assist numbers are up from from his past and uh and his you know he's, he, again you still want him to score mostly but he does score he takes the most shots on the team by a significant amount so I, I like the idea of trying to get a game stack here just curious who ends up playing for for utah yeah i'm probably more off of this especially considering what that there's stuff that could come in from Washington and Phoenix and that uh, you might want to have to deal with. Um, fair, that's fair. Um, I, and as far as Jaden Ivey goes, like right now he projects to actually be the best point per dollar play on the slate. And which is weird because he just hasn't put up a single number that works in, in a while. But again, you have that, that youth, that youth vig. Um, uh, and Utah does provide a pretty fast paced game. So um, I, I do like the Jaden Ivey call and, and Jalen Duran, like you said, just guy, guy keeps performing, you know, uh, it's just as simple as that, you know? Um, so, so I like that. I like Burks again, is the third guy that I have, but, but doesn't really rate all that terrific. Um, kind of would rather just as gamble that, that I get better value somewhere else. And then, um, not really getting too much Utah. So I don't know if I could, if I could game stack this, uh, I, it's just, again, if, if, if it's 6.30, for example, 
they announce that everybody is in from these other games, then you're in a really tough spot for the slate. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and like, maybe, maybe just maybe this, like you said, this Detroit Utah thing could be, could be a thing. I'm inclined to kind of wait though. Um, that's about all I got. You want to move uh, on to the yeah. next? Uh, yeah, let's move on to the next one. Why don't you start this one off sheets um, with the gold? Okay, so this is, this is, this is kind of interesting. Because oh, you have Miami, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so Miami, Chicago. You have Kyle Lowry is is questionable. He's missed two games in a row, and you have what's his name just kind of looming here. You, you know, you have Victor Oladipo, who, who's looming to be like you know I don't want to say the old Victor Oladipo, but at least he's thirty minutes, right? Thirty one minutes, thirty four minutes. His last two starts, if if the last two two two, you know, that was I presume with with Lowry out, right? Um, and if Lowry's out again and he's going to play 30, 34 minutes again, I have to say that I'm probably more inclined to fade it than to play it. Um, because if, in fact, Lowry does get ruled out, I think Oladipo, in the absence of any other value, is going to come out really popular at the end of the day. Um, and I, as chalk, I'm more inclined to make the case that he's just not the same. You know what I mean? Like, okay, it's great to see that he's back. You know, he can play 30, 34 minutes, but that's that's kind of be my take if, in fact, Lowry is ruled out and if, in fact, Oladipo starts and if, in fact, he gets all the steam, which he probably could and should, probably end up fading it. That, that's going to be my my take on that in that play. Um, but if Lowry is out, I might be inclined to play, um, what's his name, Butler. Um, uh, that, that would obviously assuming the Butler plays, right? But he says him, so she's probable. So if you get Lowry out on a short slate, I think Butler is extremely strong. Um, uh, Bam, for whatever reason, I'm not really getting him. I don't, I don't, I don't know why. Um, it always seems like a good play, but I'm just not quite getting him right now. I have to look at this one again. No, he's just, you know, just not, just kind of like a, I don't want to say fringe play, but he's just kind of a he's he's a good he's a good play. He's not a great. He's in general um, a cash game play. He's not a he, not, not today necessarily, but in general, he just I just feel like yeah. we Bam gets overowned maybe more than any player in DFS or as I, much as anybody. Yeah, I, I'm not going to play um Tyler Hero at eight eighty eight hundred, and then on the Chicago side, I guess I don't know. I guess DeRozan and Levine. Um, you want to play DeRozan Levine with Butler? I mean, or DeRozan or Levine with Butler? I've, I've made I've made worse plays, but that's the I think the overall thing about this game is 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 if Lowry is out, what to do with um, what to do with Oladipo? I agree. Um, I, everybody else is probable, by the way. They're technically questionable. I would be very very surprised if Lowry sits out again. Um, they really need to win games, so you'd think they would just put their best foot forward here. And I, I mean, Lowry's projected us to play tonight. Um, so this this game, the only thing I'd say is that Jimmy Butler at low ownership, even with Lowry, is certainly interesting to me on a small slate. We're getting into the, okay, is Jimmy Butler going to have to go into Jimmy mode? And he's sort of looked more like it lately because they, they need to win games. They, they've been really bad, really disappointing this season. They have won three in a row for what it's worth. So maybe maybe you could argue that that sitting Lowry because he's, they were, they won two without him, but it was against Houston and San Antonio and they were really close games. <laughs> they probably shouldn't have been. I like the idea of using Butler here um, as a low owned option. It's really a bad matchup for everybody on Chicago, but sometimes when that happens, the thing that we see a lot when they need him to, that's when DeRozan has his big games. Um, now, will they match Lowry up with DeRozan? Not necessarily. There's going to be some Levine in there too. Um, but it's hard against Miami to, to really fall in love with any of these guys from uh, from the Chicago side for me, even though they all project pretty decently. Um, I think DeRozan's my favorite. I think Patrick Williams on a small slate is somebody you should consider as a, as a potential value if we don't find more value. Um, but I, I don't I don't love this, uh, this game in general. So I think that Jimmy Butler is probably my favorite play here. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with the BAM or or Hero. Um, and I don't think there's, I, I think Oladipo is just a large field. If everybody plays small field, if they don't, um, because I do think he's a, he'll be a good play without those guys, especially against this, this team, but it, it does feel a little thin and I don't know how popular he'll be if Lowry's out, 
but I do think he'll have some ownership for sure. So yeah, this is not my favorite game, but it's certainly one with some, as we're going to go through in the next couple games too, or, or in, in a couple games, we have a lot of question marks coming up. <laughs> um, and this is one of those too, uh, with the Miami situation. So, but I, I do like the, uh, the DeRozan Butler possibility as a sort of a different type of uh, spend up tonight. All right. Golden state in New York. So we don't get to play sheets. You're going to this game. I am. You got to talk about it then. What do you, what do you got for me? Yeah. So as I mentioned, there are two kind of ways to play the slate. You know, one, one is to, is to play Jokic and or Moran and, and, and hope or, you know, play value uh, along the way. And the other way is, is to fade those guys and play kind of like middling kind of stacky builds like, like, like this game, you know, and, and um, it, it works. You know, you, you have, you have pool at 8,100, you have, uh, what's his name? Uh, Draymond, who I think is a good play in this, in this game. I think you have clay, who's a good play in this game. Um, and then on the Knicks side, you have, you have Randall and Brunson and even Mitch Robin and, and RJ Barrett. Like all these guys are priced to the, to, in a way that you really can't play Jokic or Morant with them, but you could play them all together sort of, you know? So, so I think that this is a, I think this is a good game to stack in in non um, in non Jokic Morant builds, and if you do that, you know you 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 can put up a good score, and then you then you still four hours later you can get crushed, you know, because you got Morant and Jokic all 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 coming in there, you know. But uh, and the other thing you're risking if you do this is, you know, if there's news on Phoenix Washington that comes out after this. I mean, look, if you if you stack this game and play a little too much of this game and then, you know, you end up getting like incredible value out of Phoenix somehow um, and, and and then it makes it so easy to play Jokic, you might have you might have trouble. Um, but I think this is I think it's very reasonable. You know, I, I think that all these guys that I mentioned, I'm not getting particularly fancy. I don't I don't particularly myself want to deal with like Quentin Grimes or Emmanuel Quickly or or anything like that or Kevon Looney's or I guess Kaminga would be the. The, the the fringiest I would go. I would just play play the normal guys that rate to shoot the ball the most, and and you know and hope the game. Yeah, you know, hope the game. Well, the game probably is going to stay close. Probably a close to a pick and game, right? And uh, and I think this is a very reasonable game to again uh, to stack in, in your non Morant Jokic lineups. I like it. Um, I'm with you. I I think that you you get a combination of. I mean, first of all, I, I think the projection again. I don't know what's up with these early projections, but I'm looking at it. And why is Draymond projected at 25 fantasy points? And I'm trying to figure out what that actually means. Like what, I, I, or 26, I guess he is for, for Saberson. It seems really, really, really low. Um, and, and I don't really know why, because this seems like a really good spot for all of these guys. Um, I like pool. I think you play, you could play one of pool or clay. I think you could play them together. I love getting Moody mixed in. I think that he's Ooh, that's, the, okay. That's interesting. Moody, you think how to get, get in there. Yeah, I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna end up getting minutes tonight with um without uh Divincenzo. Oh, Divincenzo's uh, out. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Um, he the problem with Moody is it's very like there's a lot of with, with Clay and Pool on the on the court. It's kind of hard for him to get shots off. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I know it sounds funny to say, but like even like th- like those guys will just pull the trigger every time they have it. Like even Steph is like he's not looking to try. Like he, he'll shoot whenever he gets an opening. But if, if they just trap him, he's happy to give the ball up. These guys just yeah. want to go and shoot it every time, it feels like. Yeah. Um, so my my rankings for these guys, I really like Draymond uh, a lot at 5,900. And I really like uh, Pool is my next favorite, followed by Clay, And then I, I'm going to get some exposure to uh, to the Moody uh, as of right now is my is my current plan. And, I'm, and it, it's, it's interesting to see how the starting lineup comes out because – you know, if Moody starts instead of Ty Jerome, he'll be everyone's darling play. And I think that he's just, he's fine off the bench. He gets at least some minutes without Clay and Poole on the court at the same time. So I, I think that's an interesting play right there. I do like quickly. I think this is a really good matchup for him on the other side. Um, he's got a huge range of outcomes and the fact that he might be owned, jump, I'll jump right off. I'm not, I have no interest in playing a high owned quickly who, you know, hasn't gotten there in a month. Um, but it's also a great matchup for Brunson and for Randall and for Mitch Rob. So this does feel like a stackable game. And maybe you, you take what I said about Duran. Well, here's the reason, a reason why you don't want to play him. Maybe, maybe you just play Mitch Rob instead um, in a, in a, in a very plus matchup against this, this Warriors team that's going to struggle on the boards. 
So I, I'm I'm into this as a game stack. I don't know entirely who I want to get all my main priorities in yet. I think Brunson is probably my favorite play on the Knicks, unless Quickly's low owned. And I think that uh, J- Randall would be my next favorite. And I think you play one of Poole and Thompson with Draymond and can pot- potentially potentially Moody as as another way of stacking today. So this is my second uh, second spot that I kind of want to attack. And Just if you look at it, Brunson. Maybe Brunson is more of an obvious play than I'm treating him like. I feel like he's he feels a little too cheap for this matchup. He's been really good lately. Um, yeah, he's going to have some ownership, but I do like him, and I like I like Robinson. I think this is a, just a good game to stack in general. Yeah, you know, the uh, it's funny. I had Draymond in his last game. He actually had 26 or so fantasy points in the first half. He um he he made he made it. He was three for three from three after two minutes in the game. <laughs> no, Randall. No, Draymond Green. Oh, Draymond. Oh, my God. That's yeah. wild. Three straight threes to start the game. He had 26 fantasy points at the half. Then he just kind of just fizzled a little bit. Um, you'd, I would, I'd like to think that this is a, you know, this is a good game for him, you know? Uh, yeah. You know, going, coming to Madison Square Garden, you know, not that, not that he needed any more, you know, whatever, but playing 30, possibly plays third, other 35, 36 minutes in a good pace game. I mean, seems like something you'd, you'd, you'd want to play. The Kuminga thing's scary. You know, he he squared, he played five minutes in the last game. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's because Draymond came back. Kuminga was 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 the was a better play when Draymond was out, obviously. Okay. So okay. he's not going to project very well. But he's always he he's more if you're if you're not stacking the game, I would say, like if you're playing a blowout angle, unless he somehow ends up starting, which I just can't see happening alongside Draymond and and Looney. There's just, I don't see why they would do that. Okay, so Washington Phoenix. I guess I guess I'll take this one first. So so first of all, um, on the Washington side, you have you have Bradley Beal in. Um, well, what that does for me is it is it it puts the other guys out of play. Um, I'll tell you who I, I had decent on, on Sunday. I had um Porzingis in that game, and he was he was he was snowflake like at the half and he had a really big second half and he was literally 2% owned in that, uh, in that game against the Lakers. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Pretty, pretty, in a pretty nice Wait, game, but oh, Porzingis. Yeah. Um, but, but I think that with Beal back, I, I don't want to play anybody else. Beal himself as a play under 8k. It seems, it seems like something I want to do, but, but I think I was, if I'm going to do that, I'd rather just play guys from the Knicks and the, and the, and the Warriors, you know, um, that, that's just my opinion on that. Mm-hmm. The, the news piece is, is coming from the Phoenix side. I mean, you have Booker who sat, um, he sat yesterday. I don't, I don't know if he's going to sit today. I really have no idea. You know, if, if I, mean, I, have, I, I, my guess just, just from uh, my standpoint is that's a pretty, it was, I, thought, I think it's a standard play the play the front end. Don't play the front end, play the second end. And it probably means Chris Paul doesn't play tonight. That's well, right. So that's what I was going to say. I mean, yeah. if he, if Booker does play, then they can just go ahead and rest and rest, um, rest uh, Paul. I don't think they can rest both of them. I mean, rest both of them, unless Booker's really hurt. You know what I mean? They're they're not going to. I think one of them is going to play. Yeah. Um, and I think that if I don't know if which one of them, but if if one of them doesn't play. Um, maybe Aiton becomes in play here. Uh, and then also look at these other guys like the um, Damian Lee, Shamit. I just kind of, I think I kind of need Booker to be out though, to play those guys. Um, that's, that's, I don't know, but, but if, if we don't have any other value, I mean, if, if Paul sits and Booker plays and then you have like still a, Cameron Payne, you know, who hasn't played three games in a row. We just have to wait and see because you get some start out of, I don't know, who it's for Damian Lee or something like that alongside of a Booker, something like that. Um, it probably wouldn't be. I guess Shamit would start. but No, no, no. Either, Damian, Damian Lee will start again. If it's okay. So in either case, I think Damian, Damian Lee would be a really, really strong play. Just have to kind of wait and, and see. And, and as I mentioned, there are decisions that you'd kind of like to make especially in that golden state game, if you want to know the truth. Um, uh, and you might not have the, the Phoenix news in time. So you might end up like people get, not getting lucky, but people just being able to play Jokic and Morant with impunity. If all this Phoenix stuff just kind of opens up, but 
as I'm talking through this, I mean, how big of a deal is it? In other words, like if both Booker and Chris Paul were out, like and Payne were out, like then okay, you know, all that stuff is like are like locks. But but if you just have Booker in, it's not as if Shamet and Lee are just are locks, right? They're just if Booker's in. I don't think those. I don't think they're even like in play. Okay, what, I don't I'm think, talking, I don't I'm talking think about Paul sits. Oh, if Paul sits, I oh yeah, I guess they're in play then. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, yeah, definitely not. Um, and and if they both play, Booker and Paul both they both play. I'd probably just kind of be off. Yeah, it's a it's kind of a weird one. Um, I'll throw out one name that you didn't mention. That if anybody's out, like so, they only have as of right now ten bodies projected to to be able to be available tonight. If anybody sits a nine man thing against the Wizards, I'm gonna have a hard time not having interest there. If nobody sits, I see I, I see them all like I see Booker, Booker and Paul both as good tournament plays, like large field, but probably not something I'm gonna get in my high buy ins. Um, I think you kind of you kind of need somebody out of that in that situation, and uh, so I, that, that's where I'm at with that one. I I can't get to anything on the Wizards as of right now. It wouldn't surprise me if anything. Wait, you threw, wait, wait, wait. You, you, left, you left me hanging there. You said there's a name I didn't discuss in the Phoenix side. And you didn't say who it was. Oh, Tory Craig. Sorry. Oh, Tory Craig. Okay. Okay. Tory Craig. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. Tory Craig, if anybody sits, is uh, is okay. a weird, like he's still not going to project that great, but he can do a lot in, in these matchups. I mean, we just saw it last night with the Lakers in a similar type of matchup um, against a fast team that doesn't play defense. He just can get there in, in different ways. You know, he had eight rebounds, four assists, a couple steals last night. I don't expect him to make all four of his threes. That's not going to happen all the time. And he's been shooting the ball really, really well this season. Um, but I, I do think Torrey Craig is like the long shot play that no one will play. So he's your way of getting different should someone sit. And I do think you want to get a lot of exposure here in case anybody does sit in. And my my early thing might be if I play two big lineups, for example, to have one of them with a booker, uh, one of the fringier pieces, maybe even including whether Bridges, Craig, uh, Shamit, or Lee. Um, and then I play one of those guys, you know, I play those guys. And I also think it's not, it's like Aiden only played 25 minutes and just dominated last night. He does still have the ankle thing. So maybe they don't want to play him on a back-to-back. Something about this feels like somebody's going to sit, doesn't it, Sheets? Even though there's no questionables yet. Yeah, I, I, I do have actually an opinion as well. I don't know why. Just have this, I have this weird... I want to talk about something else, by the way, but I have this, I have this weird feeling you're supposed to take Washington plus the points here, um, and just like do it now, and like hopefully somebody gets gets gets. I, I I think Vegas accounted for the points. I think this should be a 13 point spread, and it's seven. Um, I don't know. Washington has all their guys back. Are they really that bad? With the, they've been know, the worst team in the NBA, even with Porzingis, Beal, and 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 Kuzma in there, they've lost what 11 in a row. I think but not with all of them is what I'm saying. Well, they only lost whatever in a row with all of them. <laughs> I don't think they lost any in a row. I mean, like... Yeah, they lost... With all of them, they've lost five in a row. Oh, they have? Okay. I didn't know the Beal um, was even back yet. That's a, that's a yeah, he was out for... I guess he was out for seven of the games. So four in a row, I guess it is. Um, I guess, and then he got hurt in the Laker game. So I guess you could you could say that, that with, with them back. It's, you know, and the Suns are on a back-to-back, but it was not really a back-to-back. It was... The game was pretty much over at the end of the first quarter, and they kind of just coasted. Um yeah, it's it's an it's an interesting game that that I I would like to to think more on. I wish there was something on Washington I could find that that made some sense to make sense for a run back. I think that your best bet is probably just hope for the for the home run game from Porzingis or to take a shot on Beal. Um, I don't love the matchup for Kuzma, but we certainly know he's got a ceiling. I just I think you have to take a shot on one of those guys if you want to try the the three sons thing and hope for somebody sitting out. Hopefully we'll have the information earlier in the day that we won't have to worry about it. So Denver, Denver, Me- Memphis, like this is the last game of the day. And, and if um, it's not bad enough, I mean, you, listen, you have the two highest projected players in the same game and, and you have Jokic coming off a 400 point fantasy performance. And, and, um, and if that's not enough, you, you have Jamal Murray as, as being questionable. Um, so it's more stuff, you know, you, you have, um, KCP coming off of a really big game at 34, 34 fantasy points. Um, uh, they have him as questionable, uh, lower leg contusion. That's the new thing. It's another game that, that news can come out here that, that, you know, that you kind of want to jump on, you know, if, if, I mean, we'll just, just spew a little bit. Like if, 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 
Jamal Murray gets ruled out, and, and even like KCP is out, for example. I mean, like even if they play, these guys are kind of good plays. So maybe Bones high when they're five K. I mean, yeah. so it's it's stuff that you kind of want to see, and then you listen. You have to make a determination of what you want to do with Jokic. He's going to project, you know, really, really well. Um, I, you, you know me, I'm, I'm, I'm stubborn. I'm not going to play anybody off of 95 fantasy points. So I'm going to end up going for the middling builds in my, in, with, with what I'm doing, but. How about a guy who scored 80 or more three out of the last four games? Right. You know, whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. You know? Yeah. Um, that's that. Yeah. Listen, I'm not, listen, people just wonder what I'm doing. I'm not telling you what to do. Um, he's certainly going to be the highest fantasy point scorer, but probably, I don't know, 70% of the time tonight. I don't know. And then Morant, the other 20, and then everybody else will be split to 10. Actually, that's, that's pretty, that's a pretty stupid thing to say. I mean, obviously it's I mean more than 10% split among all those other butlers and Porzingis and all those other guys. But, um, uh, and yeah, I, I bet you at the end of the day, you could find a way to play both of them, Morant and, and Jokic. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're probably going to want that. But um, I don't like anybody else on Memphis, if that helps. So if, for me, it's just Ja on the Memphis side. And on Denver, yeah, Jokic is the best play. But, you know, these other guys could also drop off making other guys good plays. Remember, for, for if if Jamal Murray's out, and even make Jokic even a better play, I guess. You know what I mean? If it's mm-hmm. possible. So uh, mm-hmm. yeah. in, in summary, Jokic is a tremendous play. Can I can I push Probably. back on that point just a tiny bit? Oh, because I actually the, think the he, Jokic. I think yeah. without Porter, Jokic always dominates. Okay. Without Mur- without Murray, the problem is Bones is more active with the ball in his hands. Okay, so it's Fair actually enough. kind of a funny like they're close. You know, the usage is pretty similar. That's yep. my only only pushback. But I, 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 everything else you're saying, I'm totally with. What do you What do you think of this? What are you doing with this? I think Jokic being projected at 58 fantasy points is kind of silly. Ever it is like, <laughs> with, without without Michael Porter Jr. I think without Michael <laughs> Porter Jr. on the season, he's averaging like 68, and that includes like some weird games that are blowouts. Yeah, uh, maybe even higher. Uh, I look, if this game was last night, I would have used the value and played. It would be, it wouldn't even be a question, even right. with the center values, I probably would force Jokic and, and, and jaw into a lineup together because there is so much upside in this matchup. And again, even jaws yeah. projection being at 50, remember Memphis usually blows everybody out. They've played a couple close games. Um, jaw got whatever hurt in the other game. Jaw just put up 60 in 25 minutes against Milwaukee. He only played 25 minutes because they won by 7,000 points. Ja is like, I mean, he's only getting the 28, 532. If this game stays close, which it should in Denver, Ja, ja looks like 60 plus to me. Um, and Jokic is always looks like 60 plus. So it just feels like a really easy source of points with monstrous upside. And because of the lack of early value, not much ownership, my guess is by the time this slate takes off that they're going to have a ton of ownership because we're going to end up with some guys out. But maybe that's the way you play this slate. So I think there's two different routes. You can go the Detroit Utah thing, and uh, and by the way, you can do that on the on cheap enough to play one of these studs in the later games. So that's that's one way you could go about it. You could play the Knicks and 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 Golden State mostly on the Golden State side, but run it back with either Barrett or whatever, um, Barrett or or Brunson, um, uh, Randall. Or you could go ahead and wait, and play try to make the late game stacks play the thin values that 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 would become available and just hope things break your way and you'll have pivots if they don't, because no matter what, like Bruce Brown is a good play, even if everybody plays tonight, you know what I mean? He's a really good play. If Jamal Murray sits like he's good enough anyway, is my point. Uh, Bones Highland is good enough anyway. Uh, Jokic obviously is good enough anyway. So J- Ja Morant doesn't need anything for to, to happen for him to be a good play tonight. Steven Adams is another guy you could use instead of the early centers I talked about. Steven Adams will probably have to play against Jokic. There is a chance they put ja, J- uh, Jaron Jackson on him at some point for a while, but I assume Steven Adams' minutes ceiling is a little bit higher tonight at 5,100. So maybe you get those guys in with the uh, – you, you play one of the Shamit or Lee, and then you play uh, – you know, the, the, the thin value from, you know, the Moody or whatever to go with it. That's the other type of build that you're dealing with. And I kind of like both. My only thing is I, I do think that if we don't get information from these late games, I'm probably going to do the late game stack. If we think they're legitimately questionable in, in the uh, Murray case and, and, and uh, KCP for that matter. 
Um, and the same thing with the Booker Paul, all that stuff opens up more. Depends on maybe maybe Paul and Aiden sit tonight. We don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. But so I'll probably do one like that, and I'll probably do one where I play my favorite, you know, combo stack from Detroit, Utah, Golden State, and 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 uh, the Knicks, sort of covering my bases. Not 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 the best advice, but it's early in the day, so it's really hard to know, you know, if we'll be able to get enough value to get that late slate in the way we want to. And listen, you don't have to play this, but I, I'm just trying to just find like value plays. Like, if, let's say no value opened up. I mean, you could still make a, you know, a, a Morant Jokic lineup work, even with what we have now. You know, like you have, you play quickly. You could play Jalen Duran. You play Ivy, 4400. I mean, listen, these and these aren't like this, these other guys I'll bring up aren't like just just incredibly sexy. But Patrick Williams plays 40 minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's exactly. he's four K. I mean, remember we're not we're not we're not looking for these guys to win the slate. You know, we're looking to get you to that last game alive. You know, right. um, and if he puts up you know seventeen fantasy points, he could still win you the slate. You know what I mean? Right. Because it's accessing you. And this presume obviously that nothing comes out of that Washington Phoenix game, right? And if some some stuff comes out of the Washington Phoenix game, then then you can you can play other stuff. Um, the Moody play that's another one you could play. Um, that that doesn't need news from Phoenix, Washington, right? Yep. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, you you could you could definitely do this. Um, mm-hmm. And like you said, that, that like I said earlier, you know, at the beginning of this, it's just kind of a choice that. Uh, that you yeah, and it's make. interesting because I feel pretty split on my decision right now. But yeah. the more we talked through it, the more I started to feel like those late games. Yeah. Just if we don't have information and legitimate questionables, just feels like the right strategy thing to do. Yeah. Um, but I also have I think these are all really good, like really good games, except for the Chicago Miami game, which, again, that's why Jimmy Butler sort of stuck out to me because, you know, no one's I know that no one's going to play Jimmy Butler and it's a five game slate and he certainly has the upside to get there. But. At the same time, can I really play him over these other situations that I just like much better? I don't think I'll probably get to it, but I, I like the idea of it. And again, we're going to have news that's going to dictate a lot more. I'll be live at 6 Eastern, and uh, we'll go from there. Sheets, anything well, else? Yeah, but for, yeah, I, I want to talk about something else. That's the end yeah. of the NBA. So, but I want to talk about something else. Um, I don't know if you heard about this. I want to do a little more research on this. Um, you mentioned there was a game that we talked about in the NBA uh, on the slate that the Phoenix line – you think that the Phoenix line is accounting for possibly somebody being out or whatever it is. Um, so my, my son is back, you know, for, for, for the winter. And he came in yesterday. He said, did you see what happened with this Jalen Hurts thing? I'm like, no, what do you mean? So he, one of the things he does, he had, he had subscribes to a newsletter or whatever. Mm-hmm. And this guy posted this thing saying, saying there's rumors that, that Jalen Hurts is going to be out. Okay. And he, and, and, and my my son like looked on Twitter, looked he didn't see anything. Okay. But then Vegas, of all things, they had the Pat Mahomes MVP prop went from like plus three hundred to like to like pick them in like five minutes. Okay. Among other things. Among among the 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 Eagles line just kind of moving a little bit. And so actually my son did it. He, he, he took um, Mahomes to win the MVP at like pick him, but nothing, I didn't see any news and there was nothing as out a pick him. Wow. What's that? He took it as a pick him. Yeah. Ooh. And then like two hours later, um, it came out that, that, that hurts is going to sit or whatever it is. And now Patty Mahomes is like, like plus is like minus two sixty or something like that. You, you know what I mean? Out? <laughs> Wait, right. Well, no, he, he, why should he have to cash out? He's like a lock, right? Like, whatever. Well, um, we, we don't know that Hertz is going to sit every game, first of all. No, no, definitely not. But, he's, you know, but but listen, I mean, you're gonna, if, he, if, he, if he does sit out the last couple of games, I mean, that's the end. You know, that's it. Um, well, if, they, if they lose, if they lose, but if they lose two without him and they right. win one because they bring him back. And right. if the Chiefs lose two two games left. Right. But it's really but, hard but, to argue but, against him. But in any case, and then the Eagles-Cowboys line went from, you know, it moved like six points, but what was interesting is it moved like three points on like a rumor, and then like another five or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it was—I don't know if any—if if you had heard anything about it, but it I seemed did. Like I heard. I listened to a show on Sunday night that uh, Bill Simmons. They—they they speculated that Hertz was not going to play. That was a really good speculation because why okay. would you play him here, especially against a defense that gets after the quarterback the most? You're really risking injury, and 
you basically don't have anything to play for. I think they would, but I think it does clinch. Like if they, if they don't win another game and Dallas wins out, I think Dallas wins the division. I'm not, I have to double check the records. Um, Oh no. Yeah. Is it? It's a little, it's, it's a little funny to me, but um, yeah. in this specific game, may, maybe because you play, you don't want to, you know, you have to, may have to beat them three times or whatever. Um, no, yeah, I, I just, I, I just, I just found it interesting the way the money flow and the way it all happened. I wanted to do a little more research on it and see if anybody else was really on this. Cause Matt, Matt was telling me, he's like, no, nah, the King had it first. I'm like, the King, whoever it is, did not have it first. I don't know like, who the hell the yeah. King is. You know, follows <laughs> this guy called the King. Right? I, I hate I hate people like that in these in these. It's uh, the things. worst. It's the worst. But but I do want to I do want to say one one thing real quick that just that um I I really like the, I I really like that getting ahead on those kind of bets and it's something that we should try to incorporate more um because like 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 I mentioned it I wrote it in our Discord but more than that I wanted to I should have talked about like when I made the bet with the Nets when they were when they went from thirty to one to seven to one you know what I mean and more than d- tripled my but tripled my money without having a game played and now I'm kind of curious now I kind of want to go back in on the Nets at thirty to one. Because if, if anybody gets hurt in the East Eastern Conference, they're going to pop back up to fifteen to one. You know what I mean? So you can make bets with cat if there's. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to I wanna cash out or short somehow. My, I have the Vikings plus twenty six to one to win the Super Bowl, and I'm feeling like they're a hundred to one. You know, and, and it's weird, isn't it? And then they had the best season they possibly could have had. <laughs> like, right. 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 This is the nuts they could have. Oh. Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, but I do think it's going to be a little bit, you know. They, hey, look, man, they, they've got talent. They can win, and they can, they can, they can win if things go their way. And I'll tell you this: they they know how to win when things don't go their way. <laughs> Somehow, the, they if they can get down thirty nothing, then they're being they they made. That's the all Eagles are up thirty nothing at halftime, and they come back and beat them. No problem. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, good luck tonight, Sheets. Have a good night. Enjoy the game. Um, yep. and everybody else, we will uh, hopefully be, you know, Sheets. You got, you know, you're going to have to make a stack of this game, right? You're I'm going. probably going to anyway. Um, oh, well, there you go. Even yeah, as I, as I was mentioning, I mean, there, there's two, two two approaches on this slate, and and one of them coincidentally corresponds with me being at the game, you know. And I and I do think that this is the game to to stack if if there is no value, you know. Um, right. So, what to do if it's seven fifteen and there's no news yet? Uh, yeah, that's that's part of the decision making process. I probably will do one. Uh, build with assuming no value and one build to just kind of push everything out and wait and we'll see that makes a lot of sense all but, right but but there's a question is again what do you do at seven like so it's 7 p.m there is maybe some decent utah or or detroit stuff that you would oh for me i would only play if if i knew that there was going to be nothing coming later yep but you don't know um so maybe I'll you know, so so do you play Jade and Ivy, for example? Do you play Durant? I think Duran's playable regardless. Um I think they're both playable regardless. You're you're just you're just dealing with a range of outcomes with Jade and Ivy and okay. just the matchup that I like, but I don't I don't think that he should be like a massive priority or anything. No. I do think he's he's I, I mean, I think one of he we see it every every game. One of Burke's Ivy or Hayes puts up a big game, and then Bogdanovich puts up a big game, you know, every other game basically. Um, I really like that game. I just don't like the start time. But you know, you know, you know what you could do, by the way, and this this is definitely something you could do. So if you have, by the way, if you have if you have thoughts on on doing like a, like a value thing, like later, and you're thinking, I'll I'll I'll, I'll figure right away to get Morant and, and Jokic in or whatever, and Washington Phoenix, and and another another thing you could pivot is you mentioned this, like if if Paul and Booker play, I think that. Both of them are really good contrarian tournament plays. <laughs> um, that 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 you you if instead of playing like Jokic with you know uh, Damian Lee or something like that, mm-hmm. you, you play you play like Porzingis with Booker, you know, or something like that. Yeah. Um, and 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 get different that way. So and then, then listen, you'll you'll see listen, you'll see what went on in the seven o'clock game. You'll see what happened in the seven you're in your seven thirties. And uh, or in the 730 game. So let's say you OK, same thing. Let's say, say you know what? I'm not going to stack Golden State, New York. I'm just going to push everything back. And then you see the Golden State, New York game kind of goes off, you know, or it's going off mm-hmm. and you don't have it stacked. Well, then, honestly, I don't want to play Jokic with, with Damian Lee anyway. You know, um, I, I would try to maybe take that shot with Booker and, and Booker Porzingis anyway, I think. Yeah. And you could always pivot over. And one, one thing we didn't mention as a play is that. I think Jamal Murray is a reasonable play in this game. If there's a, the games that he goes off tend to be when they have a very, like another guard kind of taking over on the other side. 
right. saw the Donovan Mitchell playoff thing, you know, that, that whole thing from years ago, but that's sort of his yeah. Murray's MO. He, if other people start firing up shots and just attacking like crazy, he kind of tries to do that himself. So m- m- maybe that's what you could do. And then you could play the two 5k centers. There's four 5k centers that I think are really good plays with a uh, Mitch Rob Adams, Duran and, and, and Olenek's a little bit higher price and even possibly Kessler Edwards. Um, well, I'm sorry, Walker Kessler. Um, I, I think that that's a really interesting decision. So it's going to be a fun slate. Hard to predict this early in the morning, but we will, uh, I will be live at six and we'll do the best we can to do, uh, cover everything. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll probably have a check-in and everybody make sure that you're watching this. First of all, you're watching this. You're not in the discord. I think there should be a link in the description to join the discord somewhere. I really put it in there. I don't do it every day, but I do it. I, I will yeah. So join the discord. And if you join the discord, then you can get into the free contest and not free contest. It's a five, five dollar entry fee. If anybody's in the Discord that plays NBA is not in that contest, my my comment is just it's five effing dollars. Just freaking play it, God's sake. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm basically giving your money back, like in a freaking in a, in yeah, a free yeah. later anyway. So whatever. Um, okay, uh, that'll do it. Yeah. All right. Good luck to everybody, and uh, we'll see you at the top of leaderboards.